okay so in the last video we discussed about the problems due to loops in the graph of a program and now I'm going to discuss how the problem of loops can be overcome by a very elegant strategy which is called the prime path coverage so to understand the concept of a prime path first we need to know about uh, what is a simple path so a simple path is a path from some node ni to some node nj if none of the nodes uh, appears more than once in that path except possibly the first and the last nodes they can repeat so it means they, there will be no internal nodes and in other words a loop is a simple path so what do we mean by that for example I have uh, a sequence of nodes connected by these edges uh, let's say call this one two and three and for the node one is the initial node and let's have a loop on uh, node two so according to this definition uh, a simple part uh, so a simple part should not have any internal nodes repeated so one two three on this node uh, is a simple path and it does not have any repetition of nodes and another scenario can be uh, if I write 2 2 so this is also a simple path according to this definition why it is a simple path because only the first and the last node are repeated and uh, none of the other nodes are repeated and if you look at this edge that goes from node 2 back to itself so this represents a node loop and we that is where what we stated here that a loop itself can also be expressed as a simple path now we switch to the definition of a prime path what do we mean by a prime path it is a simple path that does not appear as a proper sub path of any other simple path so if you remember the definition of a proper set subset and any proper subset from set theory you might recall that every subset of a set excluding the null set and the set itself is a proper subset so only two improper subsets are the set itself and the empty set so by the same analogy we can uh, say that uh, prime path is that simple path which does not appear to be a proper sub path of any other simple path means it cannot be the path itself it cannot be an empty empty sub path or any <coughs> so it is that simple path which does not appear as a proper sub path of any other path so in other words you can say that this is possibly the longest simple path available on the graph one uh, in a way it cannot be further extended so if we now look uh, on the on this graph on the left bottom of this slide now we want to compute the simple parts on this graph how we can do that so we need to write the parts <coughs> in a way that no there is no internal loops uh, in that path so we can start uh, from node 1 if i continue from node 1 towards node 2 and then towards node 4 and then back to node 1 so in this way I find this simple path it does not have any repeating node except the first and the last node similarly if I traverse the other branch 1 3 4 and then back to 1 so this is another simple path which does have the repetition of the first and the last node and no internal nodes uh, is repeating in this graph likewise I can find more simple parts on this graph for example I can have 2 4 1 2 which is this path 2 4 1 2 <coughs> again only the first and the last node are repeating and you can also have 2 4 1 and 3 so th this particular diamond like path on the graph structure on the structure of the graph so sorry sorry, sorry. I, I, I made a mistake so if this it is 2 
four, one, and three. Now you can see they, the even the first and the last node are not repeating in this path. Now if you, if I extend this path further, for example, if I try to write four after three here, then you will see that four gets internally repeated. It means if I extend this path in this direction uh, by one edge, this does not remain a simple path. Why it does not remain a simple path? Because uh, the node four uh, repeats itself other than at the first and the last position of the path. In the same way, you can find many simple paths on this graph. And when you try to find, uh, when you're required to find the prime parts out of this, out of these simple parts, so it will be only those simple parts which don't appear as sub parts of any other simple part. So if you look at parts of length zero, so one, two, three, four, these are also simple parts, but one appears in as a sub path of this path, two appears as a sub path of this path, <coughs> three appears as a sub path of this path, four appears as a sub path of this path. Similarly, three, four is a sub path of this path. 4, 1, 2 is a sub path of this path, and 4, 1, 3 is a sub path of this path, 2, 4 is a sub path of this path, and uh, 1, 3, 4 is a sub path of this path, and 2, 4, 1 is a sub path of this path. So I have crossed out all those simple parts which are appearing as proper sub path of other simple parts. So we are left with just one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 simple parts which cannot be, which don't appear uh, as proper sub parts of other simple parts on this graph. So all these 4, uh, all these 8 uh, simple parts are the prime parts of this graph which are shown just below the simple parts, uh, listed simple parts. So this uh, gives a uh, way to our new definition, which is a prime path coverage. We have so far studied several different coverage criteria on the structure of a graph. Another coverage criteria is to cover all the prime paths. So, so this is a simple, elegant, and a finite criterion that requires loops to be executed as well as skipped. So the prime path coverage, which is also abbreviated as PPC, is defined as the, uh, the TR or the test requirement contains each prime path in the graph G. So we will tour all paths of length 0, 1 and so on. That is it subsumes node and edge coverage. But prime path coverage uh, not quite subsumes edge pair coverage. The reason being, for example, uh, if I have a graph like this, and now Edge pair coverage requires me to cover these sub parts 1, 2, 2, and 2, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. So, prime path coverage may cover this, this last path, last edge pair, but these two are not prime paths. 1, 2, 2, but these are valid edge pairs. Edge pairs. So we have to cover these uh, edge pairs in edge pair coverage, but we cannot cover these edge pairs uh, when we are trying to achieve prime path coverage in a graph. Therefore, prime path coverage does not subsume edge pair coverage. So this is the same uh, example I just told you on the previous slide that if there is an uh, edge coming back to the node itself then we have nodes like this 2 2 3 and even 2 2 2 and 1 2 2 so if the prime path requirement is 1 2 3 and 2 2 but edge pair coverage uh, requirements are all somewhat different and we can uh, miss some of those edge pairs if we want to cover prime path coverage which don't appear in this test requirement below <coughs> 